and welcome to the Fleet Geeks podcast. We're here to help develop fleet and transport professionals. Do you want to progress and develop your skills and knowledge? We promise to bring lively conversation and debate around interesting issues and keep you bang up to date with changes in our awesome industry. The Fleet Geeks are a community of professionals and if you enjoy the podcast, why not join the discussion for free in the Fleet Geek community over on Facebook. As Pete might say, the red light is rolling. So uh, hello and uh, thank you for joining uh, me on this uh, solo Fleet Geeks podcast. So after, uh, it depends in which sequence you've been listening to these uh, podcasts in. Uh, we're also obviously on YouTube now. And so if you can see me, uh, I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, uh, really. But uh, yeah, after a, after a series of really, really, really good podcasts, uh, well, aren't they all? Um, we had some fantastic guests. We had uh, James Adcroft come along. We had Tom come along. We had uh, obviously Pete. And, you know, we've had some great guests on the Fleet Geeks podcast uh, recently. And it always amazes me wherever I go around uh, training uh, around the country and we get delegates, um, you know, with 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 some of the with some of the um, contractor work we do. Um for, for other people, so basically training other people's stuff. I think we, we, we all know my background and where I used to work, and we still do work for that very good organisation. Um, but it, no matter where I go, um, I talk to people and talk about podcasts, and, and everybody's heard of the Fleet Geek podcast, which is fantastic. Um, lots of people listen, and lots of people uh, enjoy what we do, enjoy the content. So you've had some really good stuff over the last uh, few weeks. And... Um, Excuse my voice a little bit hoarse today. I don't, I've, I've been doing. I've just come on the off the back of a two week uh, transport manager um, course, so um, chatting a lot as as I do. Um, so I'm, I'm sure you've all uh, you, you know you've all enjoyed those podcasts. We talked about some great stuff, but um, holiday time and busy time. Everybody's busy, and I know our guests, uh, fantastic guests that we had on, are incredibly busy people. Um, flagship here at flagship we're very very busy at the moment uh, we've got holidays and what have you so um it's me it's just me so um it was great really because i can get to choose what to talk about then can't we so i'm going to i'm going to talk about obviously the, the, the subject that's 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 uh, you know familiar with me and that's that's training and the future of, of training um the the catalyst for this uh discussion was um uh uh, you know, I, we keep Facebook for, for for the good and bad that Facebook does in the world. It's there's some really good groups on there. Um, we, we concern ourselves with, with. I think there's one or two spurious sort of drivers groups that I don't always believe that the stuff that they write on there. But uh, and, and so indeed, some of the transport manager groups as well. But some of the groups are really good, and we get a lot of good, really good um, grown up discussion, even if we have a bit of a banter uh, from time to time. Uh, and there was a discussion recently on one of those um, on one of those on one of those groups that, uh, that posed a really good question. It's, you know, how how much should a, a transport manager know? And I think that's pretty obvious, really, isn't it? If you're a transport manager and your name is on a license when you uh, when you sign form TM one, um, uh, you've got some undertakings to legally fulfil and. Uh, you know, you can't, there's, you can't really duck any of those. But the question was posed over driver's hours, really, and, and how, how much should a transport manager know about driver's hours? Um, and that kind of led me on to thinking about, um, the, you know, transport training. Is it, is it fit for purpose? Uh, what, what we currently do in terms of transport training for, um, for transport managers, you know, drivers as well. As we know, as we talk, and we've done a really, really – Check it out if you haven't really listened to it yet. We, in fact, we did it over two parts. It was it was such a big subject. Um, we talked about the uh, consultation. The government is still uh, we we know further down the line on what the government is going to do with um, driver CPC. Um, that's that's still uh, as I record this. That is still very much uh, in the hands of uh, the Department for Transport, who are going to decide what they do on it and try to find some parliamentary time and what have you. Um, you know whether that will happen, we don't know yet. But that got got us thinking, and we we did discuss it in a previous podcast about um, transport manager and, and how fit for purpose that is in today's world. And uh, you know that that that's the the fact that we have clearly through this post, um, we have probably some transport managers out there whose whose who's knowledge may not be 
uh, up to date or may not be thorough enough, um, you know, that's worrying in itself. That's saying somewhere that we have a process um, that's, that's slipping, slipping behind, isn't it? So, and I wondered if that is because we now, since 2011, we now make transport managers to be qualified transport managers. They have to take the international. We dropped the national in 2011. So the international. Uh, and the international means that we some of the time that we spend with transport managers or what would be transport managers is probably on stuff that they're never going to deal with in their professional life. Uh, but because it's like a general practice in certificate, we have to cover it and we have to cover, cover the syllabus in order to get the because because potentially they could be asked questions about it in the exam. It's no two ways of getting around it, is there? I mean, as much as I would love to have the support of the industry to to deliver a course that was um, met the needs of today's transport managers, re- essentially the whole transport manager experience is geared around obtaining the qualification, isn't it? It's, 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 it's about getting that tick in the box and getting that certificate through uh, through the door. I've still got mine proudly displayed above me i've got to mention how far i've been into this into this podcast before i mention that uh, that there is all there is also on top of the uh, the, the the one for haulage of course is, is is one for passenger transport which um i don't get to do enough of that these days um so the, yeah so you know the, the, what that's that's what we're what's what we're trying to achieve i'm sorry for anybody who can't see where i'm sort of pointing at the moment i'm pointing behind my uh, right here at certificates on the wall we're after that certificate that license to practice as a transport manager so um you know that achieves a got an aim a goal um and then post transport manager um or post post qualification um we have olats on uh, operator license awareness training we have cpc refresh it's not a legal requirement to do that um, we quite often hear words I hate to hear, but, uh, you know, the, the, the traffic commissioner likes to see or maybe insists in, in some cases, although it's not a legal requirement, they can add it as a condition of your operator's license or the continuation of your operator's license. Or if you're a new applicant, the transport manager hasn't sat their transport manager for over five years and hasn't been on a license. then they can make that a condition of your license that you will go away and, and do a refresher. Um, but that syllabus in itself is controlled by, um, and, and it's going a bit, I'm not, I can, I can, I can hear, if Pete's, Pete will no doubt listen to this, he'll be grinning now when I mention this, but that syllabus in itself, um, we're not really free as trainers and training organisations just to deliver what we think is, is relevant to today's modern transport manager. We are guided by that syllabus in terms of the fact it has to tick the boxes that transport manager ticked originally. Uh, and of course, my pet, pet, hate, if you like, hate's a bit of a strong word, uh, but that's the fact that um, the, the industry, the market demands that the OLAP courses and the CPC refreshers courses are also registered with uh, DVSA stroke jout for driver hour uploads. Now, what do you think to that? Is uh, it's a management course, uh, but we deliver it so that people who sit on it can claim their a seven hour uh, upload. Um, I personally, I've always been strongly against that, and people might think that's a little bit snobbish. Um, to say that there's a difference between drivers and managers. But I think it, it, there is a difference because um, and that's, that's clear now. In fact, in, in fact, I would argue that because of driver CPC, you might get some drivers. It's not beyond the realms of possibility at all. Um, and also because they practice it every single day, that, 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 that a lot of drivers are, are far better educated than, than some transport managers uh, when it comes to some of the basic things. Uh, such as driver's hours. So, Hello, it's Sharni from Flagship Partners. We are really proud to sponsor the Fleet Geeks podcast. If you need expert advice or training for your fleet business, make Flagship Partners your first choice. We are really excited to announce the launch of our Transport Manager Academy. With expert development for fleet leaders, we offer fully accredited initial Transport Manager CPC training, CPC refresher and operator license awareness training, as well as mentoring, support, and professional development beyond the qualification. Our vision is to develop elite fleet professionals. Can OLATs, uh, in their present format, can they hit tick those boxes that 
that um, you, you know that, that really make um, a difference to people's everyday lives. And I think from a transport manager's point of view, you don't necessarily if you're you know, one size, we always try, don't we, in this country, whatever we do, we always try to make one size fit all, and it doesn't. And if you're a transport manager that's that's engaged in, or your, your business or your the, the fleet that you manage is engaged in sort of, you know, no international travel, and it's fairly sort of domestic, where you potentially are going to get um, the, the drivers hitting a six-hour working time before they hit four-and-a-half-hour driving time stuff, then... I think that's that's the areas you know you, you need to focus in that areas. I'm not saying you need to be experts in, um, in interrupted daily rests on ferries and trains or multi manning or stuff like that. Only if you do that, um, but because of the you know the demands of the, the syllabus has mentioned that um, you know we, we do have to sort of cover that off. But so from my point of view, the a transport manager should be confident enough. I mean, law the law dictates that. Uh, you know, EU 561 dictates that um, we, we have to, we're, our responsibility of the operator is to ensure that drivers can complete the job that they're given or the jobs that they're given within the law. They, you know, you have to organise the work correctly so that they can achieve that. Uh, and also to instruct drivers or to, to, to make sure that drivers understand um, drivers' hours rules, etc. Now, if, you, if your transport manager doesn't understand drivers' hours rules, then, you know, what hope have we got? But um, so it's a legal requirement, as well as obviously an undertaking of their uh, of, the, of their TM one form, and, and take it a, a step higher than that, an undertaking on the operator's license. Um, so yeah, I think uh, you know they de- they definitely need uh, to have that. But for me, it's 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 more to do with dealing with infringements uh, and having the confidence to speak to drivers about infringements, why they've occurred, perhaps how they've occurred. Uh, and what the driver needs to do to put them right. So, um, you know, not just rely on the drivers doing the driver's CPC and knowing automatically how these things work, etc. I think the transport manager, need, uh, man, if you think of the word manager, manager, leader, you've got to lead by example. So if you're not if you're not familiar with these things, uh, and I get it, you can't be, a, you know, you can't be everything to everybody as a manager, a transport manager. They have plenty of other stuff to do as well, such as dealing with customers and, uh, you know, how, bit of HR and all that sort of stuff, which is why that is all covered in the transport manager syllabus, by the way. So yeah, I think uh, you know from from that um, from that um, post, you know, um, and it was sort of alluding to a transport manager may or may not necessarily be uh, up to date. And I think the particular example, without trying to identify where the post came from, in fact, it was an observation. It wasn't a post, but. Um, was that you know the, the transport manager's view was that the drivers should look after the driver's hours because you know that's what they do I, I get it they do but you know as a transport manager you do have to be ahead of that curve so to speak so the future of, of training perhaps then and I know we talked about it in a previous episode but perhaps also uh, there is some scope for um the uh, you know the, to, to reduce back down to a national uh, level the the qualification so go back to where we were pre-2011 and having uh, just a, 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 a national qualification now that I'm going to say well that'd be brilliant because that would give us more time to, to to focus on the on turning people into transport managers giving them the practical stuff that maybe is missing sometimes from the syllabuses um, to, to you know, do the job in real life. Um, but then I feel that if if we knocked it back down to a national qualification, then you would have the market would then demand that we do it in less time. So, uh, you know, it's going to be a it's going to be back to my original point about it's you know, we just really want a certificate and we? we want to get past. Um, I can't let one of these podcasts go by uh, without you know, a, a bit of a, a bit of a, a sales hook, if you like. But you know, that's that's something we, me and Pete, um, we we and, and and the rest of the crew here at uh, Flagship, we 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 absolutely believe that it is no, nothing should ever be just a tick box exercise, and we will always try to deliver something that goes above and beyond what you know that tick box, whatever that looks like, is. So uh, you know that that's that's definitely what something we set out to do. Whether we're whether we're bound by syllabuses and bound by 
jump DVSA or whatever. Um, it, you know, that's what we so that's something we we strive to do. It that's what one thing one of the reasons why I'm I'm, I'm you know here with with Pete and flagship uh, because we can we you know we want to do that. So so there we are. So um, a bit of a, a bit of a one man episode today. Then um, uh, hope hope you've enjoyed that uh, that sort of brief discussion of me just uh, rambling on about uh, where training should be. One thing that we we. And, and it surprises me with these podcasts just how good of coverage we do get with this um and you know just how well recognized it is in the industry when people come to you oh you're the flea you're fleeky oh yeah yeah um which is fantastic it's great and I, you know i tell that everybody else who's been involved in this podcast you know i feed that back to them and say you never guess what there was three people in the room the other day and they all heard of the podcast and they all follow us and um, what we don't tend to get is a lot of interaction so we want to hear from you people uh, what do you think? What do you think of the podcast? What do you think of what we talk about? Um, what would you like us to talk about? You know, so uh, it, we we are on. Uh, we put these all out on YouTube now. Um, the recordings and and this is happens to be a video. Um, we put them all out on, on YouTube now. We've also got another YouTube channel, um, which I really recommend you have a look at. Um, Tawif. The only way is flagship. It's a bit of an irreverent, if that is a good, that's a great word, isn't it? Uh, an irreverent look at life behind the scenes at flagship. Um, it's it's uh, it, you know, it just gives you a sort of um, a feel about what we do, who we are, and the sort of things we get up to. Um, and I think it's it's been some fantastic. We've had some fantastic feedback from that as well. Uh, we've got some hilarious stuff on there. We've got some writer characters in our little group so uh it's well worth getting a getting a check out of them and uh and just getting a feel for what goes on behind the scenes uh at flagship but um that do for now i think that's about uh ooh, 16 minutes that's pretty good going i think from uh from a solo podcast i've had nobody to discuss things with but i hope you've enjoyed that and uh, we'll see you on the next one but don't forget uh like comment and subscribe I hope you enjoyed today's episode. If you did, please share with your friends and colleagues too. Join us for free on Facebook with the Fleet Geeks community for transport and fleet managers. Fleet Geeks offers ongoing professional development, networking and mentoring too. So get in touch with me, Pete Rushmer, on any social media platform to find out more.